Whenever I think of finding blessings and celebrating Thanksgiving, which have been just brought me so many blessings in all the years of my life, I can't help but think of the blessing we had on Friday to hear from the prophet. And with all the surprises of this unusual year, I know I'm not the only one who feels so grateful for the comfort and guidance for the light and truth from heaven. I wonder what it had been like to have it have to have had an announcement that Moses was going to share a message. And then I remember something from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 107, verses 91 and 92. It reads thus. And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. Behold, here is wisdom. Yea, to be a seer, a revelator, a translator, and a prophet, having all the gifts of God which he bestows upon the head of the church. I am so thankful for President Nelson and for all those at the, on the earth at this time who have been sustained and called as prophets, seers, and revelators. I consider that my best blessings and gifts offered by the Savior and the gospel that have been shared through scriptures and prophets and other leaders and answers to prayers. These are my best blessings. I posted a note on Facebook a few days ago about an idea that came to me when I couldn't go to sleep one night. The 12 days of, of Thanksgiving. It did not include 12 drummers drumming or a partridge in a pear tree, but it was just the idea that on that 12 days before Thanksgiving, we write down 12 things that we're thankful for. And then the next day we write down 11. And then whatever comes next. I was never good at math. But it's been a wonderful exercise for me to make these lists of blessings every day. A few years ago, I was on a, a trip to Salt Lake for some reason from Utah County. And I decided that I would out loud list all the blessings I could think of for which I was thankful. And so on, on about uh, an hour, for about an hour before I got to where I was going, I just started listing all the blessings I could think of. In my mind, I went through my house, I went through the neighborhood, I kind of went through my life, and I just began listing blessings. And then when I got to where I was going, and I had a little thought, and that was something someone gave me a while ago. And it went something like this. What if you only had today those things for which you thanked God yesterday? Something like that. Well, I forgot one thing that just startled me. It's usually in my top 10 or so. I forgot to thank Heavenly Father for water. Now, I've lived several places in my life where we had no running water at all, sometimes a little bit, off and on. And it was never safe water. So it took a long process and a long time to get a drink of water. I'm so thankful for water, for safe, clean water. And I personally think it's more important than oil. <laughs> That's just me. Anyway, the idea of finding blessings is intriguing. And so is the idea of being thankful for blessings. For me, this includes remembering to thank others for their kindness to me. And, oh, I have so many who've been so kind. I've tried to do a good job of that, but I know I'm not perfect at it. Many years ago, at about midnight, I was climbing the stairs to the door of my apartment after a long, tiring shift at the hospital. And there on the doorstep was a beautiful bouquet of flowers. <laughs> I got inside, put everything down, and I picked up the card that was attached to the vase. It was a long thank you note with many kind thoughts about me. Not all of them were true, but they sounded really good. Even before I finished reading it, I was thinking of thanking whoever gave those beautiful flowers to me. But they didn't sign the note. What? Think about it, boys and girls. <laughs> I had to be nice to everyone. <laughs> what a wonderful, kind, beautiful, dirty trick. <laughs> I thought of friends, neighbors, people I worked with at the hospital, even my family. Well, for the next two weeks, I had to be nice and kind to everyone, just in case. This might be something you could use as an idea. If you ever need an idea 
get to mess up the two weeks of someone's life. This would be a, a good way to do it. One of the blessings, friends, from that anonymous gift was that I imagined it could be anyone. Like at the hospital, I was, I'm a nurse. I was a nursing supervisor. So I worked with a new, almost everyone there. The hospital wasn't very big back then in the 1800s. And everyone I was in contact with became a suspect. He could have done it. She could have done it. All my neighbors and friends and family members were also suspects. It was a very interesting two weeks. I learned a lot. I learned, for one thing, that it's good to suspect everyone of being kind and good and wonderful. I had to feel grateful for everyone. Gratitude is an essential quality for anyone who is yearning to be more like the Savior, more loving, more patient, kinder, less judgmental. I love this thought about kindness. On a day when you can be anything, be kind. Albert Schweitzer, a great humanitarian, said this, you must give some time to your fellow man, even if it is a little thing. Do something for those who have need of someone's help, something for which you get no pay but the privilege of doing it. He said, even if it is a little thing. When Elder and Sister Abrea moved here from Argentina, I had a chance to visit with her one day. She told me how hard it was to leave her mother. She was an only child, and she and her mother were very, very close. And every Tuesday, her mother would come over and bring some Swiss chard from her garden. It was just a, a little thing they had together. Well, you know when a new general authority is called, he's busy. He's on trips. He's learning. And she was left alone a lot and was lonely. One day, it was Tuesday in the morning, she was working on a wedding dress for her daughter and she began thinking about, oh, if my mother could only bring me some Swiss chard and visit me, it's Tuesday morning. That was our, that was our habit. Well, a short time later, the doorbell rang. So she went to the door and it was a young mom whom she recognized from the ward. She didn't know her very well, but she looked nervous. And she said, oh, Sister Abrea, I was just doing the dishes and I had this strong impression to go pick some Swiss chard and bring it to you. I don't know if you know what Swiss chard is, but anyway, you can imagine what that meant to Sister Abrea. She said she knew that God loved her, was aware of her, and knew that she needed that sweet surprise that day. You know, I thought, well, what would I do if Heavenly Father said, go pick some Swiss chard and take it to somebody you don't know? I probably would have laughed and continued washing the dishes. I love this quote. On a day when you can be anything, be kind and be grateful. Gratitude is said to be the healthiest of all human emotions. The more we express gratitude for what we have, the more likely we are to be more aware of the blessings which are around us. Gratitude makes us happy. It decreases stress. It improves sleep. It helps us heal. It improves our relationship with others. Start every day with expressions of gratitude, and your day will be better, more positive, more enjoyable. And don't spoil your enjoyment of what you have by whining and thinking about what you don't have. That's a trap. So on a day when you can be anything, be kind and be grateful. Once I was in another city and could attend the first part of sacrament meeting before catching a plane back home, and I noticed the brother that was counting the people there was walking down the aisle, kind of looking right and left, and a little boy sitting right in front of me looked about six or seven years old. When the man got to him, he reached out his hand and shook his hand. I think he thought perhaps the man was looking for his family to sit by them or something. That really touched me. And then once at the, at the hospital, there was a patient coming in to have a baby who only knew Spanish. And they, didn't, they couldn't find anybody who really spoke Spanish except one nurse had learned how to sing I am a child of God in, 
in, in English. She sang it in English, sorry, to the woman who only knew Spanish, but she recognized the tune and it became a real comfort to her. Somebody named Grace Hines, I love that name, Grace, wrote this little poem about little things. Oh, it's just the little homely things, the unobtrusive friendly things, the won't you let me help you things that make our pathway light. And it's just the jolly joking things, the never mind the trouble things, the laugh with me, it's funny things that make the world seem bright. So here's to all the little things, the done and then forgotten things, the oh, it's simply nothing things that make life worth the fight. I pray that your Thanksgiving will happen more than on just one day this year, that we will learn to express thanks every day for the many, many kindnesses and blessings which come to us. I close with counsel from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verse 7. Thou shalt thank the Lord thy God in all things. Oh, how I thank him for his son, for the gift of his son, for the gift of the Holy Ghost, for tender mercies, and for the blessing of being with you for a few minutes today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Savior, Redeemer, amen.